Hey everyone, I have here the LEGO Star Wars Starship Collection Invisible Hand, and yes, it is this big, or this small. It cost me $50 US, five zero. comes with 557 pieces, and I did build it live over on Twitch. To put the size into perspective, here's a random minifigure. Here's the box, if you see that on a shelf in a store. And here's the Super Star Destroyer from the same line, so yeah doesn't quite add up obviously completely different scales but just so that you have that kind of comparison they're staying consistent with the sideways build style for the stands here and then you get the print that's exclusive to the vehicle or the craft in this case the ship and also this one comes with one of the 25th anniversary or 25 years of lego star wars bricks the build was plenty satisfying. It's definitely a, a solid build. There's not a whole lot of hollow space in it, even though it looks like it could have had it. It's rather dense and heavy. So you definitely feel that you've got something here. It doesn't feel like you've got just an, an empty shell or just a skin over a thin frame. This is a, a proper Lego build through and through. It does rely on just a small number of stickers, but most of what you see here for detailing is done with proper building techniques and regular pieces, which, which is good, which is exactly what I personally want to see. And as you can see, it doesn't really have a camera unfriendly angle. I actually rather like it from some of these rear angles, even though I'm able to see the, the anti studs down here. It doesn't bother me too much. And you know what? The proportions of this relative to the real thing look pretty good to me. They're not exact, but they're pretty close. And the shaping is nice. This represents the, the actual bridge up front. It would be nice if that could have been like a printed piece, but isn't really feasible, honestly. The color match for the stickers is not ideal for the grays. They still need to really, really work on the grays. You can see it here, especially. It's, I think that's the the worst example right there. But see what I mean about so much of the, the detailing being done with actual parts and a lot of them aren't even fancy parts and don't even use particularly fancy build techniques. It's just smart. It's just clever and good design in my opinion. Uh, I forget which one, one of the command decks, I forget which this one here particularly is for. What I like about this most by far is the hangar bay because they didn't just stack up some one by two trans uh, light blue to represent the, the shielding. The uh, plates along the side. Look at this. You can see all the way through. That's very nice. Yeah. Let's it lets so much light through there and it's tiled inside. It's not just one color of tile either. They actually kind of set up some paths and there are some nice details inside. I'm not going to spoil all that for you, but there is a little two stud suggestion of an MTT off to the side in, in just the best way that they could in that uh, in that scale. So I'm definitely happy about that. Uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of better than I think it needed to be. Because usually when you see windows and things like that, you're going to see just this technique used, right? You're going to see just the, the one by twos and one by ones. I like the fact that they used the one by twos through here in ways that allowed light to come through. They did it here as well. So, you know, you get that, that light refraction, which really helps them to look a little bit more like, it's a little bit more immersive. It looks a little bit more like it's actually, you know, emitting light from it. You got the conning tower back here or the observation tower which also has the one half it's a one one by two so half of a round tile in the trans clear there to represent the windows mostly from the side it's not a, you know, there's a little bit that you could see i guess you know there's a little bit more if this was perfect it would have a print on it as well but most of the time you're not going to see that so i'm okay with that personally too bad you had to get this little indent on the side they're just really trying to minimize the number of pieces there and keep again the proportions as good as reasonably possible lots of suggestions of the point defense cannons on it and the you know the big big uh, turret installations the big three engine groupings back here i think look pretty good and are definitely scaled well to it and yeah Again, just generally, I'm happy with what I see here. There's a little bit more than meets the eye in order to cover a little bit more of the, the action of this on screen. They do let you pull this apart and pile it, <laughs> just the nose section of it down. They use the clip system for that, which was smart. I thought that they were gonna use Technic pins for that, honestly, but this is much smarter because this has much uh, better security top to bottom and they even have the additional security as far as preventing it from sagging 
by using the, the tile up here and fitting that just into the amount of space that's available. So it's really well located. And I think that's, that's smart. Now this whole end, it's got some weight to it. Again, it's fairly solid. There's very little open space in there at all. And I guess I didn't, might not have shown you just how, how much they've, they've left space in the, in the trench, <laughs> you know, the, the equator of it, the, the belt, that's pretty good. But, uh, I don't know, it just feels like it's going to stay here long-term, it's not gonna fall off. When you're doing this, you have to be careful not to knock this off accidentally, but it's not a big deal. Also, this will stand by itself like that. The stand itself is secure enough, and the way this is attached to its stand is very simple as well. I actually really like how this goes together. It's all clamped together with the two directions of, uh, of brackets there simple build easy to put on easy to take off but works well so i think i think this is well sorted i think it's probably better sorted than it looks like you know it's not just about the shaping and the details there are other factors that went into this that i think were thought through well these are the leftover pieces no little prints here it would have been nice to get just just something with a little little printing on it a little, little one by ones but they use just again four stickers for the whole thing and yeah that gray needs to be better once again, the price was $50 US, five zero. It is 53 euros for some reason, which is not right at all. 50, oh, sorry, 47 pounds UK and $65 Canadian. I do feel like that price is too much for what you get here. But that said, it does feel kind of par for the course these days for something collector roughly this size, Decently designed, you know, good looking, and Disney or Star Wars. Overpriced, yes, but relative to other things, I don't really think many other companies are going to give you something that's fully licensed, that gives you this much stuff, that's Star Wars branded, that costs less, honestly. Just being brutally honest with that. I would like it to be less. It should be less. It feels like too much, but all things considered for 2024. It ain't that bad. I'm not at all mad at the fact that it does not come with a minifigure because it's not minifig scaled. For folks who want minifigures, go get minifig stuff. As far as I'm concerned, v uh, vilifying this because it doesn't come with a minifigure makes zero sense to me whatsoever. I'm generally much happier with this than, than I thought I, I would be. Uh, I was really caught up on, on its size when I first saw the pictures and the price. But I, I think I feel like I came to my senses and uh, you know, just kind of looked at other things on the market and was more reasonable about it. So in the end, hey, the very first ever Lego Star Wars Invisible Hand, good, finally took long enough and relatively attainable, at least for most folks and doesn't take up this much space. <laughs> so you can actually collect these things, which is good. So I would like to see them really 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 push down the prices as much as they possibly reasonably can but keep doing lots and lots more of these relatively reasonably sized things they need to do lucre hulk they need to do a venator they need to keep keep it going and uh, so far they're off to well it's not a start is it but they're off to a good continuation for now so those are my thoughts thank you very much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this and that it brought you some kind of information or sites maybe that helped you to come to your own conclusions about it. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.